when he was 14 months old was when the autism light bulb went off. When I remember thinking, I think he's autistic. Hello, beautiful people. My name is Stephanie. I have four autistic children that I talk about a lot on this channel. I get asked a lot, like what were their first signs of autism? So I decided that I would compile one video to share the first signs that I notice in each of my children. If you stay tuned to the end, I will also share the signs that I noticed in myself when I first started thinking, maybe I'm on the spectrum as I did get diagnosed last year. I mean, they had to get it from somewhere, right? So. Let's get going. All right, so we're gonna start oldest to youngest. My oldest is 14, his name is Noah, he is amazing. He is probably our trickiest child because I actually have six kids. The two oldest are typical and then the four youngest are on the spectrum. So when he came along, I wasn't exactly sure what was going on immediately as I think most parents are, but I did know that something was going on. Now there of course are things that I can look back and be like, oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. So Noah was two and a half years old. During the first two years of his life, I was a workaholic. <laughs> surprise, surprise. As soon as I'd been a stay-at-home mom for not even like a month or two, I immediately knew something was going on. He was having trouble sleeping and I have ADHD myself. My husband has it, my two older kids have it. So I am not a stranger to hyperactivity but his level of hyperactivity was like anything I'd ever seen. We had so many issues because of it. So I also noticed like he really wouldn't play with his two older siblings. They would be playing together. So I think it's because I was able to see what like, what socially that would look like. And they were all very close in age. My oldest was three when he was born, barely three. I was a young mom and I just didn't fully know what to look for, but I knew something felt off. Like in my gut, I just knew something was going on. I Googled a few of the things and autism kept coming up. I went to my husband, I asked him, I was like, do you think Noah could be autistic? And he thought that autism was very similar to Down syndrome. And this isn't to say that it is, it's not to, to promote this in any way. This is us being honest. We just didn't know anything about autism. And then a year later, he was in daycare and daycare kept calling us because he wasn't sleeping at all during nap time like the, the other kids. He was biting them, the kids, and then also like attacking the daycare workers to a point where he would draw blood and we would have to come pick up Noah from daycare. He also had an instance where he was like fully potty trained for like two and a half weeks and then he regressed into pull-ups and then slowly back into diapers. Now I had just had two children that had been potty trained and that I'd been through these developmental milestones. So I knew this didn't look like a typical path. Now, Danielle and Lonnie, my two oldest, they didn't follow each other exactly, right? Every child has its own journey and, and pace and all of that. But this was so off the path. Like this didn't even seem like this was something that was typical. These were things that really made me think something is going on. He would just stack blocks all day. He wouldn't wanna play with any toys. If we gave him cars to play, he would line them up in a diagonal line. He was very specific about that. He would line things up on the fridge. And so his playing just seemed a lot different and unique compared to my other children. And I remember those were just the specific things that really made me think, gosh, something is going on. From age three and a half to four, I really pushed and pushed and pushed because I just knew something was going on. We had something happen that just clicked it for, for me. A little bit after his fourth birthday, school issues and things that were going on, we finally got listened to. Eventually got his autism diagnosis shortly after his fifth birthday. But when he was four, he got the pervasive developmental disorder. And that's when they started to just like, diagnose drop on him and so forth. Talente and Talente, little little ta you're going to talent her. What are you gonna eat? Dinosaur food. <laughs> Dinosaur, where are we going tomorrow? Dinosaurs. I will be doing a long updated story on him, but he's 14, so you can understand like, 
it's a very, very lengthy story. Uh, the next one is Lex. Lex is my almost six year old and he is just full of energy. And with him, it was a lot different. He was very advanced on a lot of things. Noah didn't start crawling until 13 months old. He didn't start walking until two. And so Lex was over here just doing his thing and I didn't think anything of it. But I do remember specific moments that autism automatically popped into my head. And it was when he was 11 months old and I had given him SpaghettiOs and he sucked the sauce off of it and spit out the pasta. Most kids love SpaghettiOs, like this is odd. I remember specifically thinking sensory. Then when he was about 12 to 13 months old, he stopped sleeping. And before that he was an amazing sleeper. And I remember thinking, this reminds me of Noah's sleeping issues. And that was like the first thing that popped in my head. I quickly pushed it out because I was like, Stephanie, all kids go through a different rate of, of growth and all of that. They all go through weird things, but he hasn't slept right since. <laughs> like we, uh, sleeping issues is definitely an issue that we've had with him. Now, the things we noticed with him were definitely more subtle. So it wasn't like, bam, something's going on. It was more just subtle things that I remember sticking out to me. He couldn't socialize without being aggressive. I had a friend at the time, she would bring over her daughter and he was just mean to her as compared to earlier. I have it on video of them playing well together. And then suddenly a year later, like he just didn't know how to play or socialize with her. And this is something that he would struggle with for a very long time. He still does struggle with it, but not as much in that aspect. And I remember like he couldn't say in the church daycare, we were living with my mother-in-law. We went to church with her. He just would attack the other children. The one thing with Lex that really stood out to me as autism, I remember thinking like, this is an autism thing, <laughs> is his eloping. He would escape, he would elope, he would never stay by me. And at first I thought it was kind of normal. Like when you've had so many special needs children, you just start thinking atypical things are typical. I just thought, well, he's just too young. He doesn't understand that he needs to stay by me. And then again, this friend, she would come over with her daughter that's only a year older than Lex. And I would remember specific moments where she would walk by her mother without holding her hand. That would have never happened with Lex. I would look at other kids in the store and I would see the same thing. And I am not saying that the things I am sharing is what 100, that that's all they had that led to their autism diagnosis. I am sharing signs that I first noticed. And as you can see, they're really, really different. They're really different on what kind of made the autism light bulb go off. Next we have Liam. Liam is my almost four year old. He is the one that is the most affected. He struggles with more skill sets than the others. And he is what is considered limited verbal. He has about five to eight words. Liam is the hardest one to talk about, not emotionally, but like, when did I notice? Because I noticed from birth and I can't explain it anything other than my gut, my intuition, because I remember when the doctor laid him on me, he looked just like Noah, just like Noah. And I remember this voice inside of me saying autism. When he was a month old, they had him genetically tested. A lot of you guys remember that, remember the newborn test video. And that's when we found out that he carried the same genetic abnormality as my now 14 year old. When he was about two or three months old, he still couldn't lift up his head for longer than a few seconds. This definitely like signaled low muscle tone, which is what Noah has. So some people say, oh, well you just made that come into fruition. It's not something I wanted. I just remember having that thought and I'm just being honest about what my first thoughts were. We did everything that we were supposed to. We gave him tummy time. We tried to help him as much as we possibly could, but he just had and has low tone. I thought, well, maybe he just has low tone because the genetic abnormality can affect children differently. When he was 14 months old was when the autism light bulb went off. When I remember thinking, I think he's autistic. He had started to eat things that were non-edible. Now he's 14 months old, so that's normal in a sense, but this is something that typically 14 month olds don't eat and digest. I'm trying to be respectful to the fact that Liam is, he's a person and I'm not gonna put all of his, all of his business out there, but it was definitely something that made me go, whoa. 
and then he started to do this head shaking stim. He doesn't do it anymore, but he did it for a significant amount of time. At first we thought he was saying no, and then he just started randomly going through the house and just doing it constantly. And that was the first time I'd seen like a true stim on a child like that. I knew what it was immediately. Obviously, <laughs> this is my third child to be diagnosed with autism. At this point, I was familiar enough with autism to understand that that's what it was. But that was the moment. That was the moment that I knew. He also never babbled. So like his communication just seemed a little bit different and he really didn't acknowledge us as much. Um, he didn't acknowledge Penelope, my youngest at the time. Sometimes he wouldn't even see us. Like it wasn't like he would engage with us. His eye contact was definitely very, very minimal. So he carries a lot more of the classic signs of autism. So for us, there was, there was really no autism light bulb. There were specific things that I mentioned that, you know, really was like, okay, he's going to get a diagnosis because of how classic his signs were. The last child is Penelope. So this one was a little bit more unique because she was meeting a lot of her milestones um, up until about eight months old. And then things kind of went downhill. By 11 months old, she wasn't eating baby food. She wasn't eating anything. I'm not a parent that pushes baby food or pushes this or pushes that. I feel like every child does everything on its own rate. We constantly would offer it, but I just thought, oh, maybe she's not ready. And then it wasn't until we had Thanksgiving with our family and she wouldn't eat anything. She wouldn't eat pie. Um, if we gave her food, she would start gagging on it. I didn't think autism, but I remember thinking this isn't normal. Obviously sensory came to mind and then that is when the worry kind of started a little bit, but I tried to push it down. Uh, shortly after this, um, we realized that she was starting to stim to put herself to bed. She would like stim her hands in front of her eyes. That is something that um, Issa and Priscilla shared about Abby with fathering autism, that that was one of her like first signs as well. And I had already watched that video. So when she started to do it in my gut, I was like, okay. But I also knew 11 months was way too young to make that determination and we just had to kind of wait. But we also noticed that she wasn't responding to her name. Around eight months old, she was. Um, she would respond to her name basically almost 50 to 60% of the time. By 11, 12 months old, she wasn't responding to her name anymore. Um, now she hardly ever responds to her name. Like if I were to put a number on it, it'd be like, half of a time out of 10. That's how much it happened. She just kind of like stopped engaging with us. Like everything that she had done before she stopped doing. Now she is visually impaired. So we do realize that some of these, it's hard to really cross that hair. Like, is it autism or is it was, her, was it her vision? But I do know that we had moved across the country during this time. And that's the both issues is it's really weird. But when Liam was starting to show those signs, we had just moved from Jacksonville, Florida, down to the, the Clearwater area. So we had just been busy moving and it wasn't until we settled down that I was like, okay, something's going on. Well, the same thing happened um, because we moved almost a year later. We had moved to Colorado and I was getting ready for her 15 month appointment. She was almost 16 months old. I pulled out the 16 month ASQ and out of 30 things, she got one. And I remember just, just knowing, but the first signs were definitely her not eating, her stimming, not responding to her name. She just kind of seemed a little bit off in her own world. And I do think that I lived in denial for a while on this. Like, I think that there were a lot more signs in front of me, but I think that one, we were so busy. We were so busy. I had three special needs kids. We had just moved across the country to get them help. And I was up my eyeballs and paperwork and appointments and therapy evaluations. And I was also getting her help for her feeding. And so it's just so much. But I think for me, I didn't want her to struggle. I was just kept hoping that things would turn around. She is technically still considered nonverbal. She doesn't have really like completely independent, consistent functional words yet. All right, so myself, myself, me. Let's talk about me. Let's talk about I, let's talk about number one, oh me, my, my. Okay, now Noah was 10 
And it's hard because when he was younger, I don't remember what I was like when I was four or five, right? I don't remember what I did, how I acted. But as he got older, I had memories of my own childhood and kind of how I processed things. And two things happened when he was 10. One of them was when I was talking to a therapist about how Noah hates loud sounds, but he, but if he controls the volume, he's fine with it. And a therapist said, yeah, that's definitely a sensory issue. That's very common with kids that have sensory issues or kids that are on the spectrum. So a few days later, I was driving in my van and my favorite song came on and I just blasted it. And I forgot to turn down the volume before I got out. Lonnie got in the car later with me. It blasted, right? Well, when I'm in the car with him and he has the music on, I always turn it down super, super low because I just can't handle it being that loud. And he made a remark. He's like, yeah, but when it's my music, it's not okay, but when it's you, it's fine. And then I flash back to what the therapist said. And I was like, oh, I have always had issues with like rain and different things. So I wasn't surprised to hear that like, oh, I probably have some sensory issues. So that was one thing. And then I remember I was sitting on my bed. Noah would go into our bathroom when he would get overwhelmed, like after watching a show and he would reenact the show, like kind of like role play. And I did that as a child, either Lonnie or one of the the kids just was like, what is Noah in there talking to himself in the bathroom? I was like, oh, it's fine. It's just his way to decompress and get the anxiety out from watching the show. And they looked at me so strange. Like, how would you know that? Like, that's not a typical thing to do. I thought it was though, I thought it was. That was the moment that I started to say, you know, I might be on the spectrum. <laughs> it's just the simplest things because it's not just that one thing. It's that one thing that starts making you think about everything else that starts to make you kind of like reevaluate your entire childhood, right? We always ask like, why do the kids elope? Why do they run? And then I had this epiphany one day. I had this moment. If I was by myself and I was at a grocery store, I would run from my vehicle to the front door. Like I always did it and I've done it for so long, I never thought anything about it until we had had that conversation. And it made me think of all the times that I have to run and it like gives you this adrenaline and makes you feel free in a sense. This was something that really stuck out to me later, but I was in a grocery store with a friend. I was behind her, so I felt like I could safely stem. And my stem is definitely one that is not like hands flapping or leg tapping or anything like that. Like it is definitely unique and not typical. Okay. Like no one would think, yeah, that's a typical stem. Like they would naturally be like, what's that girl doing? Like even Lex has mentioned it. Like mom, why do you do that kind of thing? So, and it opens up great conversation, but I have had a stem for as long as I can remember. I had done the stem and because of how I do it, it kind of like makes my whole body shake. And this lady at the grocery store had asked me, like if I was okay and I said I was fine. She kept pressing the issue like, are you sure you're okay? I don't think you're okay. Cause she thought I just had a seizure. And of course I didn't, I didn't even have a name for it then because Noah was like six. So I just kind of pushed it off and never did that stem in public ever again. Later on when Noah started to develop different stems, it kind of made me think like, oh my God, you do stem Stephanie. So when you have children that are on the spectrum, this is why so many parents are getting diagnosed because they have autistic children. We grew up doing certain things, not realizing that what we do is different than what everyone else does. But when you are a parent to special needs children, you do have to listen to, okay, this is signs of autism. This is what a typical child does. This is what an atypical child does. And so it's kind of broken down for you. And then it kind of makes you, again, reevaluate your childhood and be like, well, I did that. Like, why is that an autism thing? And it really makes you kind of reevaluate you as a person, not as just as a child, but as an adult too. Like I was so embarrassed for so long that I struggled with Ezekiel functioning to be able to be like, no, this is, this is a thing that it isn't necessarily your fault. Like this has a reason behind it, gives you a lot of validation and really helps you. So those are just a few of the moments. The moment that I knew that I was, I was like 99.99% .99 sure I was autistic was when I started to follow autistic TikTok and I followed um, a couple of, of, of females who shared their signs and I was like, oh, 
Okay, I hope everyone found this video informational. I thought this was a very good video just to share, just to kind of conclude things down on things that really stood out to us because we can go down a list of signs of autism that each child has, but it's really the ones to me that stick out to the parents that usually are the most significant. If you have any questions you want answered, leave them below. If you're new here, please feel free to hit the red subscribe button. Um, I do a lot of content like this. I'm gonna continue doing content like this and we're just gonna have a good old time. Where you move, make me blind. You will always be there. There's no doubt in my mind. You will always be there. Heading out to see ya and leave the rest behind.